In this lesson, you are going to identify the nature of eigen decomposition. Follow the process of eigen decomposition and value the significance of eigen decomposition. In our last session, we compared the different kinds of matrices. We learned about the 10 kinds of matrices. We also learned that a square matrix is a matrix whose numbers of rows are equal to the number of columns. We also learned that a matrix can be a diagonal matrix if each of its diagonal element is zero. With this, we said that a square matrix and identity matrix can be a diagonal matrix provided that it complies with the requirements. We also pointed out that an identity matrix has diagonal elements that are equal to one. If you missed lesson number eight, the link is given in the description below. You may pause this video and continue if you're done with it so that lesson number nine becomes more meaningful. A lot of mathematical concepts can be understood properly if they are broken into component parts. So in some of them, analyzing their universal properties, if any, is helpful to know how they behave in relation to others. So of course, this is not the result of our own choosing. Let's have number 24 example for better understanding. So we can represent this number using base 10 or binary, but the best way to understand its properties is through prime factorization. So this is the prime factors, or these are the prime factors of number 20. So we have five, two, and two. So when we multiply five by two, that is 10, then by two again, then that becomes 20. So with this, we can say that it is not divisible by three. So 20 is not divisible by three. And we can also say that any integer multiple of 20 is also divisible by two. So for example, when we say 40, 40 is divisible by 20. And because it's divisible by 20, it can also be divisible by two. And also of course with, with five. So this is the way we decompose an integer that is by using prime factors. So in the same way, we can also decompose matrices to understand its functional properties. So this process is called eigen decomposition. Let me write that. Eigen decomposition. Composition. Okay. So what is it? How do we decompose a matrix? In a, anyway, this is the root word is decompose or yeah, decompose. So, so, so this is the best question to ask. So we decompose a matrix into a set of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So to do this, we have to follow the three steps. So for example, our matrix to be decomposed is a matrix which have the following elements, two, two, three, and one. So now let's decompose it. Let's follow each step of the process for us to be able to understand this process very carefully. So our first step is to define eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So I assume that you already have the knowledge about how to get eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So if you don't have some knowledge, I suggest that you first study how to get eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Then if you're done, just come back to this lesson for you to be able to really go through the process very properly. So supposing we are done getting the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, and so we have these eigenvectors. The first one is three, two, with the eigenvalue four, an eigenvector negative one and one with eigenvalue negative one. So this is again with the assumption that we are done with the computation with the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. So if you would like to verify, you may check this one yourself. So we can actually verify that only the length of the vectors are changed and not the direction. So to do this, let's have this solution. So 
2231 and what is this this is actually our original matrix then we multiply that first with the first eigenvector then this is equal to 4 3 2 then we get 12 8 because when we when we multiply this one this to this then this to this this one to this and this one to to this one then we get 12 8 so if we're going to simplify or decompose it then this is the the result let me use another color this is the result okay so if we're going to graph this one this is our graph for the 3 2 so this is the graph for the 3 2 okay and for the 12 8 this is our graph so as you can see the direction is not changed so there is still the same line our line does not sway to the right or even to the left it does not do like this when we do like this one okay where well, it does not go this way but it is still the same straight line so we can say that 2 3 or 3 2 is the shortest form or is the short form of 12 8 right now let's go to the second one so we have negative 1 and then 1 so we multiply this one to the original matrix so we get negative 1 and 1 notice that our original is negative 1 and then uh, sorry we have 1 and the negative 1 okay so again our original is negative 1 and 1 then when we multiply this one then our new one is 1 then negative 1 okay so how we do that so negative 1 then 1 is here so this is the original point and then when we use our eigen decomposition then we have this one here okay so we have negative 1 then we have 1 so this is our short form okay so the same with this one it does not change its direction it does not go to the right it does not go to the left but it's still the same column space okay so that's how you verify if your eigenvectors and eigenvalues are correct remember that it still follows the same column space so or to simplify that it follows the same line it does not sway because if it sways then your process could be wrong okay so the next step is to normalize the eigenvectors so what we do here is to transform them such that their length is equal to 1 so what do we do in here so 3 2 for u1 right our first eigenvector of 3 2 and what we do here is we get the square root of the squared of the sum of the squared of 3 and 2 so 3 squared the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared that becomes the square root of 13 so when we do that we have 3 over 13 and uh square root of 13 2 over the square root of 13 then when we do the process of division then we get 0 0.8321 for 3 over the square root of 13 and then for the next one we have 0 0.5547 so if we would like to check the process then we could do like this just like the same way we did for the first one we multiply the original matrix with this one the normalized form so when we do the process we get this one so as you could see we go back to the original eigenvalue for remember so this is our original eigenvalue so four and then this one we go back to the same value normalized value of our eigenvectors 
okay so we will do the same process with u2 or our eigenvector number two so we have negative one one still the same case we're going to get the square root of the squared of negative one and one so we get negative one over the square root of two one over the square root of two and that we get negative 0 0.7071 for the for this one and then 0 0.7071 for this element so how to check that let us check if our process is correct so again the same original is the original vector uh, matrix a multiplied by this normalized value of these elements okay or this one then it's still the same case we go back to our value for the eigen value 2 it's negative 1 and then the same values for here and then here okay so in short this process is correct now let's go to the next one the next thing to do is to put together the set of eigenvectors of matrix a in a matrix u so next to it put a diagonal matrix so maybe you would like to ask me what is u this one so this is the original matrix then this one is eigenvectors then what is this the is equal to the eigenvectors and our matrix okay oh anyway this is actually there is no there is it is supposed to be like this okay that's actually wrong it is supposed supposed to be like this okay so this is the diagonal diagonal vector so this mathematical statement can be written as this one just to make it clearer okay so a is equal to the vectors the eigen vectors so it's now become a matrix okay so we have three two for the first eigen vector negative one and one for the second eigen vector let's see okay this one three two and negative one and one and then we have our diagonal matrix wherein the values of the elements in the diagonal are the values of our eigenvalues so our eigenvalues are four and negative one okay see that then of course zero and zero because it's diagonal then Maybe you would ask me, what is this? So this is the inverse of this one. Okay, again, this is the inverse of this one. So if you want to know how to do or how to arrive at or get an inverse matrix, the link to lesson number five is given in the description below. So it's better if you go back first to lesson number five for you to be able to understand properly how this process is is done okay or after this video you can go to lesson number five whichever is which so what is this this is now what we call your eigen decomposition values okay compo composition values that is if we're going to multiply them we get this matrix remember this matrix this matrix is our original matrix which is the matrix a see they are still the same so in short this one are the prime factors of this matrix so for the integers we have these prime factors for the mat matrix we have these eigen, uh, eigen decomposition values 
What is the significance of understanding eigen decomposition? First, it tells us many useful facts about a matrix. So for example, a matrix is singular if and only if any of the eigenvalues are zero. Second, it can also be used to optimize quadratic expression. So in short, it is used to simplify the calculation of other complex operations. So the best way to understand its significance is by imagining that you are examining your car. That is not working anymore. So to do this is to disintegrate the parts and understand the core particles and their tasks. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is an eigen decomposition? What are the uses of eigen decomposition and make a matrix and decompose it? Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.